Hello there, YouTubers. What we have right here is the Akai GX75 recording a test tone tape. In order to be able to adjust the speed and other things on cassette decks, I want to have a cassette that has a certain frequency on it that can be measured easily for easy calibration at a certain level. That's what we're doing right here. As you can see, I have a Type 2 Chrome cassette running in there. It's a Danon, of all things. And I got my level precisely set to zero decibels. You may see this fluctuating from time to time, but that is going to be due to dropouts of the tape. Um, as you can see, I actually had to uh, set that a little bit uh, a little bit out of balance to uh, get this result right here. Uh, I got the tape nicely calibrated, bias and level and all that. So that should be all fine. See, there was a dropout. And we are using this as a source frequency generator. And as you can see on the frequency counter, I have it set to 1 kilohertz. Precisely. And that was actually quite a bit of a drama. I had to, had to wait until this thing had warmed up a little bit because of frequency at first. It just kept changing. So we got 1 kilohertz coming out of there. Going into the Akai GX75 and I'm just going to record the whole entire side of this tape with that 1 kilohertz tone at a level of uh, 0 decibels. In case you wonder what it sounds like, well, it sounds pretty terrible. That is the SIRS. Not, not, uh, gee, this is driving me crazy. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to hear that, but uh, the tape actually does add a bit of hiss to that. But still, it should be perfectly measurable. Our test cassette has successfully been recorded, both sides. I now have it just a random spot. We can really just fast forward a little bit and press play back. Now, frequency counter over here won't do anything. It does need a TTL signal in order to be able to work, which uh, this thing does provide, as you can see, sync. So we were using the scope, and the scope, of course, has a frequency counter built in. There it is. One kilohertz. It is fluctuating a bit, as you can see, but uh, the average would be about a kilohertz. So let me go ahead and get out some other cassette decks and see how those are going to perform. Here we have the Iowa ADF 910. I haven't used this thing in an age, so let's see how this performs. Oh, not very well. Are you kidding me? There we go. Ooh. Uh, yeah, the joy of collecting vintage audio equipment each time you pull out something to actually use it It doesn't work anymore. Uh, I tell you making this video is starting to become real fun I had to tear that thing all apart in order to be even able to get the tape out again because that was stuck Well, here we have the JVC KDV 6 which should hopefully work So uh, let's pop in the tape Press play back. As you can see, the levels are a bit higher than zero decibels, but that's actually correct that way. Uh, this meter has always been reading a little too high. But uh, as you can see, as we uh, look at our uh, scope, scope screen, Seems to run a little bit faster than the Akai. The average seems to be 
Well, actually, not not necessarily. And as you can see, it's it's pretty much uh, correct. One kilohertz. And I know it is correct. I mean, I used this thing for many, many years. Never had any speed-related problems with this one. Ah, uh, here we have a nice one. The Techniques 671. Let's see if this one still works. I uh, haven't used this thing in years. Let's see. I'm not getting any response. Oh, we're not getting any movement from the tape. This thing. Nope, no chance. Is everything gonna break today or what? That ain't even funny. Oh, it's not gonna work without a tape. Oh, there we go. There we go. A little bit of uh, try and error. Uh, well, that doesn't work very well. Okay. A little bit of uh, getting going. As you can see, levels are a little low. On these meters, of course, you can see really well how much the levels are fluctuating. That's, of course, the cassette technology. So, let's see, what does this thing say? Well, uh, may I, sh I should probably say, this thing, the capsule motor is bad. It has worn out bearings, uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, the drive belt, as we've just seen, is in kind of a questionable condition. So, uh, that is something that we can see on this one. As you can see, our speed is definitely a little low. Sometimes it, uh, it has a peak at a kilohertz. But most of the time, as you can see, of course now that I'm filming it, it all seems to be fine, but most of the time it actually stays quite a bit below of uh, a thousand. So uh, that thing is going to need work, but I do know that. <laughs> We've just seen it too. The Pioneer CTF4040. This one has not been used in years as well. It's always been one of the more reliable decks in the collection, so I'm actually quite optimistic that it's going to work. Let's see. Okay, level meters are definitely kind of sensitive. Wow, <laughs> especially the right channel, that's, that's pretty loud. But it uh, does seem to work. What does the speed say? Well, I'd say it's a little fast. A little fast, as you can see. Our meter does remain quite constantly over a kilohertz. However, what you can also see is, by this, uh, the speed is quite a bit more stable than on the techniques that we've just seen. So this one actually works, which is good. Ooh. Oh well. Got a third one that's broken. Meter is stuck. Well, it won't move. Crap. Okay, turns out the stuck meter is just a bad record play switch. Gonna need some contact spray if we disengage it goes back to zero. Interestingly, in pause mode, this one shows a bit of a signal as well. That's kind of weird. Let's see if we can uh, quickly fix that. Let's see. Ah, come on. Mm, 
Nope. Well, as you can see, it's going down with the record place, which is definitely going to need some uh, cleaning spray. Oh well, oh well. Here we have another one, the Pioneer CT606. This one I found at the dump. It has never seen any service, never took it apart, just haven't had the time to do that up until now. But uh, I think it does work. Turn it on. Lights are blown in the meters, it seems. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay, we got uh, we got an output volume on this one, so if we set it all the way up, the meters are going to go all the way up. Anyway, as we uh, look at the scope. It's a little high. Yep, it's a little high. Ooh, that's some dropouts right there. Yep, speed is too high on this thing. The next candidate is the Onkyo Integra TA2750. That seems to work so far. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Levels are a little high. I guess the balance is kind of off on uh, on this cassette. That tape is kind of an old one. I didn't have any uh, nice new ones, otherwise I would have used those. So we look at our speed. Once again, I'd say that might actually be a little, little, little bit too fast. And here we have a Sankyo STD-2000. Oh! Doesn't this have a light in it? I don't know. Might be... Oh, there it goes. There is the light. Once again, this does have an output level regulator, so... You can adjust it. Wow, as you can see, that's that's actually uh, pretty much spot on. And the peak LED at the 0 dB mark just starts to glow, so that's actually quite good. Let's take a look at this frequency. Oh, seems to be a little on the low side. Really, just a little. You can see we are getting up to the thousand kilohertz or a uh, thousand hertz quite often. So that's not too bad. So that's the Sankyo. And last but not least, another Pioneer, the CTF 500. This one has got a worn out motor and possibly a bad belt. Well, we'll turn on see what this does. Well, levels are kind of high, so you can see. Turn off the Dolby and put it into the chrome position for accurate readings. Let's see what this does. Oh yes, oh yes, the speed is low. That's definitely low. As I said, that has to be expected. The motor in this thing is bad. But there you have it. Some speed measurements on various different cassette decks. Thank you for watching. And see you again soon.